Now we're going to work on this GPS 7240. I, the only plants I have left are I have one, two, three, four. I have five left. Hi, Michelle here. I'm joining you from my video editing station, otherwise known as my couch. The reason I'm joining you today is to introduce the third part and the last part of my 16 Hoyas to Repot video series. Today is the last, I do believe, five or six plants. What I do also in this series is I go ahead and I answer some of the questions that have been posed to me via social media. So I hope that you gather your plant chores or do your plant watering while listening to this video. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, please put them down below and on with the video. Thanks. So this one I'm going to work on. This one has a small trellis already, uh, which I'm going to work on in my next video. But for right now, I'm just going to repot this in something bigger and then we'll focus on the trellis next video. Okay, so I see, I see a little root. It looks really hair-like, but it doesn't pull apart. So, cup feels very solid. Feels like a lot of roots in there. These roots look very, very, very thin. And I see one... These are very thin roots, but they're solid. They just look dry. They look dry. Cause see how I can kind of pull these apart really easy. They're, they're really thin. They're not really wet. Here's one. They, they're, the roots are good. I, as you can see, I had two cuttings. I have this cutting, which has a gonzo root system. And I have this cutting, which has a more subdued root system and a new growth right at the very base. So this is good. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I lost a leaf. Darn it. That's a bummer. Reusing substrate. That's kind of an interesting question. Um, you know, you wouldn't think of it. You can, you can reuse your substrate. Uh, you can reuse, uh, I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't originate this idea, trust me. Um, I first saw this on uh, Unplant Parenthood and Wild Fern. They both reuse their substrates. Um, Unplant Parenthood boils her pond and her sphagnum moss. And I do believe Kevin uh, Hakuna La Planta, I do believe he does the same thing. I wouldn't reuse soil, although technically you can. I, I know some people bake it. Some people microwave it. Um, but yes, you can reuse soil, although I wouldn't. Uh, I have the opinion that um, once it's been used for a year, it's uh, depleted all the necessary nutrients out of it. So, but yes, re boiling it for uh, 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes will definitely uh, allow you to reuse it. And when it's so expensive, um, that's a good thing. Guess I want to ask you a question. You know, what do you do with your substrates? How do you like to repot your Hoyas? Um, what are, what are your techniques and tricks. What do you do? You know, everybody can share something. Um, I am not a, 
Hoya expert, to say the least. Um, I only know what I have experimented with, so I definitely only know a small fraction of what there is to know. Um, and I always want to know more. So if you have any tips or tricks you want to share in the comments, you know, please do that. I would love to learn your hints and little tricks and techniques for how you get your Hoyas to grow big and strong and large. Okay, so now we got the GPS 7240. I am not going to trellis it at this time because I am going to save that for another video. But here she is. Now we're here with this gosh darn plant. And this is an enduensis. This is this is this plan is kind of the bane of my existence. I have I have tried to raise this plant for a very long time, and all I keep ending up doing is rotting the roots on this. So this is whoop, there we go. So these are reroots. Oh my gosh, and they have like no roots. That's really sad. I've, I've I've probably rooted these for four months, and they have basically no roots. No roots. Look at that. No roots. And the roots are crappy. Oh my gosh, that's awful. Okay, well, we're not going to leave them in there no more. Because they obviously did not like that. I definitely thought it was going to have more roots than that. Wow, that's uh, that's way sad. Well, I'm going to be putting that back in a cup. Uh, there's, it's just not big enough. But I'm going to put new pond in it because that pond is just all nasty and soggy, and I'll put I'll mix that with some other pond. And this is just so wet. I need to keep these drier. I think that's why they've had so much trouble is they're so wet. Okay. Looks good. Looks like all the stems are below the the level of the pond. This one's got to come up a little. So now we got that one and we got a little separator between whoops uh oh one one flew out and another one oh three flew out okay well we'll try that again. That happens sometimes sometimes they just don't want to be they don't want to go in And see, this is why I like this, this, this little soil scoop so much because you can get down in the tiny little, tiny little crevices around, around the cuttings. All right, look, now it's firmly in there. Okay. So now we have that. So now let's put the cup in. I think once I water this in, I think it'll do a lot. I think it'll hold safe. All right. Now we're, now it's time to get the very last ones. We have, these are Walliniana cuttings that have rooted together that I need to pot up. There we go. Those two may not want to be separated.
There we go. So we got four cuttings. That's all that's left of the plant. The plant started out as one two-leaf cutting, one one-node two-leaf cutting. And then it, it grew into a, a plant that was about the size of the GPS 7240. And then all the roots rotted. And then, um, and then uh, I repotted it. My philosophy on it is I started out as with two leaves and I have more than that now. So even though I may have rotted the roots or mess up the plant, I still have more than what I started with. It's a net gain. Um, and if you want, uh, because I'm on a Las Vegas kick today, I'm still playing with house money. Um, so these, these cuttings are still more than what I originally had. So let's put these all in here and hopefully we can grow another new plant out of it. I'm kind of not that good at potting up cuttings. I tend to let the cuttings kind of go everywhere and I don't want to do that. I'm just messy. I'm just a messy, messy potter. But this looks fairly decent. Got all the cut cuttings in there. Everything is as it's supposed to be. So even though these cuttings had a fairly small root system, um, they will grow into this cup really quickly because they are four cuttings in one. So these will enmesh into each other really quickly, a lot a lot quicker than just one cutting by itself. So that's why even though the roots are smaller than say some of the other cuttings that I've potted up in these cups, in these pots, uh, the sheer fact that it's four cuttings in one me is, is why I'm able to do this. Okay, uh, when to cut the roots and start all over. There are a few times, um, before I do that, this is my Clemenciorum. Um, I took the plant outside to do a repotting and I left it out in the sun for about five minutes and I ended up burning the leaves. And so I had to take cuttings. I had five leaves on the plant and uh, this is what survived. I had another leaf. Uh, I gave that to my daughter. Uh, for her birthday, so she really wanted a clemency orb. So this is rooted. Um, this has a new node, uh, has a node right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got this great root system and it's gonna be Okay, sorry about that, battery went dead again. Camera does not have the best battery. So anyway, uh, this, this clemency worm has this really great water root system. So it's going to do good uh, being potted up in this four inch pot. <clears throat> so I was beginning to talk about uh, what, can, what specific circumstances in which I would cut the roots and just completely start all over. Um, there are a few situations in which I will almost always cut roots and start all over. The first situation is if there are root mealies. And that is not a hard and fast set in stone. Um, if there are, as you can, as you saw earlier in my video, if there are just a hint of root mealies, I am going to experiment and it is just an experimentation. This is not something I plan on doing permanently. But as an experimentation, I am going to try spraying rubbing alcohol and on the roots 
and seeing if that makes a positive change uh, to keep root mealies away. I don't know if it will. It may or may not. I'm just experimenting, but I am prepared to remove all the roots in those situations if that occurs. Another reason I would remove all the roots, of course, is if there is extensive root rot. Um, I'm not talking about roots that if you just pull one or two roots off and there's an issue. I'm talking about if you um, are if you are opening up a pot and every root that you gently tug on is just pulling right off. Um, that would be a situation, yes, in which you would just cut off all the roots because in that case, it would indicate to me that the root system as a whole uh, is not viable and you would just be wasting your time trying to, trying to rehabilitate a root system that is weak already and it's not going to produce a viable root system for you um, or if it would it would take so long that um, you would it would be faster if you would just restart the roots yourself other reasons I would re root the plant is it suddenly starts dropping a lot of leaves if the plant is going from uh, if the plant is going from LECA or pond to soil, I might cut the roots because a water root to a soil root is not apt to do well. Um, soil roots are pretty much fundamentally different than than water roots or pond roots, I should say. So they will not ge generally survive. Um, soil roots, you can transfer to pond. You don't have to worry about getting every speck of dirt off the roots. However, um, sometimes the roots do not transfer well. Sometimes you do need to remove roots when you transfer from pond to soil. Um, pond, pond is a little more forgiving. Lekka, not so much. Um, Lekka is normally not forgiving at all. Um, you generally have to scrub every, every part of soil off of Lekka root, off of roots that you want to transfer to Lekka. And normally, uh, you will see a loss of soil roots when you do transfer to LECA, um, which you normally don't see with pond. Now, I cannot say that with absolute certainty because I do not have extensive experience transferring, pop, transferring Hoyas from soil to LECA. I can only base it on my limited experience and experience I've heard from other Hoya growers. Um, and they have said that it is difficult transferring Hoyas from soil to LECA because of root death. But it can be done. It just takes a little bit of acknowledgement that there will be some extra steps. And I am having a heck of a time with this, with this Croniana. This is a Croniana Black. These are actually two Croniana Blacks. I got them from two different sellers, basically around the same time. Um, I am potting them into one pot and I am having just a heck of a time because I am a messy potter and that's why. And I position the roots all the way up in the front of the pot. And that's not what you're supposed to do. You want the roots in the middle of the pot.
Okay. So we have this croniana, and unfortunately, this is a good example of why I would take a pot, a plant out of a small pot and put it in a big pot. See this, see all of these lack of leaves on this long stem. Uh, this, is, this is a growth issue. I'm going to wrap this around a trellis and hope that uh, that spurns on some growth on, of leaves on this on this stem um, because you can see it does have leaf growth. There's a leaf right here. This does have a peduncle on it, um, has a couple. It has fresh growth. So it's, it's a healthy plant. So that should do it good. And believe it or not, I know you won't believe it, but we're down to the very last plant. This is my Nova Ghost. And this is, I've had this for, Oh, I don't know, eight months maybe? It hasn't done a darn thing. It hasn't grown, it hasn't done anything. So it feels like the roots are fairly secure. Oh, and I see root mealies. Well, that would explain something. So I'm gonna look at this. I'm gonna take a look at it. It's got some good looking roots. But root mealies, of course, will be detrimental to a plant. I'm going to take off all this soil. You can see the root mealies right there, right on the, you see the white dots. They're not that bad. So, <laughs> I'm debating. I'm debating whether I should spray the plant down with rubbing alcohol like I'm doing with my other experiments or if I should just go ahead and cut the roots off. I've basically sat with this plant and waited for it to do something for months and it's done nothing. So that would be a reason towards cutting the roots off. But this is a very firmly established root base. So do I really want to see that removed? No. So I think I'm going to spray it down with rubbing alcohol and see what happens. I may be making a very bad decision. I mean, the worst thing that's happened, the worst thing that could happen is, you know, I kill the cutting. The cutting is not growing anyway. I mean, the cutting is not growing anyway. Now the only thing we have to decide is, do I want to put this in a cup or do I want to put it in a pot? And the root system is pretty much established. However, I don't really want to waste a pot. So I'm going to put it, I may regret this, but I'm going to put it in a, in a little pot, in a little cup. Um, and we'll, we'll just see what happens. We'll just see what happens. Because it's only one leaf. It has no growth point. It has no anything. So it doesn't really, it, I don't think it will do what I want it to do in a four inch net pot. Okay. Okay. So let me go ahead and get cleaned up and then uh, I'll finish up the video. Now I'm done cleaning up. So this is the whole array. I don't know if you can see it all, but I have 16 Hoyas here that I repotted today. And I hope that most of them will get put on trellises. I'll save that for an, another video. But I hope that you found some information that was useful today. I hope that if you like this, you'll give me a thumbs up. If you would like to see other content like this, I hope that you would consider subscribing. Please leave any comments down below. And until next time, 
Thank you so much for joining. Goodbye.